else. I don't know what to say. Hello, we are back. Hi there. I am Jennifer, CEO here at Platinum Skin Care, and this is Dora. She's Hi. our office manager. Are we there? Query error. Are we on there, Dara? Let's see. Let's make sure we're there. Are we there? Anybody? It says we're live. I think we are. Okay. All right. Can you see us? Can you see us? <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to start talking anyways. We're good. All right. <laughs> good, good, good. <laughs> All right, so let's see. We do have one little thing that we're going to mention yeah. today. Um, we have a new tool coming out on the website. It's gonna be called our Peel Finder tool. And that is really awesome. You'll be able to put in all your information. It's gonna ask you some detailed questions. And there are up to a thousand different results to give you the exact peel with the exact kind of flaking That's and awesome. downtime and not downtime and your skin problems. Everything's all together. So it's gonna be a really, really precise tool that you won't even need to call us and ask us questions anymore. It's just gonna be right there. We're gonna say, go, go take your quiz and you're gonna know what you uh, wanna start with. They're going to be so educated. They're gonna be more educated than they are it. right now. <laughs> Perfect. All right, so we have some questions here. We're gonna get started. We're gonna dive right and in. And if you have any other questions and you didn't send them through on our, what is our page? What is our page? Uh, Platinum Skin Care yeah. Guru. Page. Yeah, but no, that's not Peel the University. Peel University. Hello. Peel there University. That's where you can put your questions in. And if you have another question today, obviously you can type that in. And when we're done answering these, we'll go straight to those. All right. All right. All right. First question comes from Debbie Herbert. Um, she has oily skin from Alabama, Fitzpatrick of three. She says, can peels help skin glycation? Right, and that's one that you hadn't even been I, asked before. No, that one was new to me. And I had been asked quite a few times with emails, and the first time I definitely had to yeah. look it up, and this time I wanted to, you know, go over it one more time. But that's basically when you have too much sugar and it starts like bonding with your collagen, and mm. then your collagen can't function properly, your skin can't hydrate properly, and you end up with very dry very wrinkled skin so you look much older than you should and everybody wants to know what can i do right and there really is no cure once the damage is done it's done mm. you can improve upon it and you can help your skin by following basically just a good skincare regimen like right. you know things that we're going to recommend you know vitamin c retinol TCA peels to help stimulate new collagen and elastin. Um, hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid for mm -hmm. the hydrating. And keep in mind, whenever you put hyaluronic on, obviously that's gonna pull moisture. So put it on damp skin mm -hmm. and make sure to seal it in when you're done. Otherwise it could you know, evaporate uh, away again. So for someone with this very dry skin, I would maybe either add some emo oil or, you know, for sure, Dermasnap can help, but you might need more. That's what I'm saying. Maybe some emo oil on top of that to help be really moisturized. And then, you know, just follow the good regimens like we're saying for everybody. And that's, you know, as good as we can do. Probably, I don't know if even some lasers or needling might help too. You know, anything you can do, hmm. do it. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. All right. Rosemary has oily skin from North Carolina, <clears throat> darker skin, Fitzpatrick of four. Um, she says, I did four TCA 13 peels each time with four layers and dream peel in the night. I get good peel after, I get a good peel after my peel is done. Then after a week or two, get back to the same place I started. Please advise what am I, what am I doing wrong? So I feel like her skin feels and looks good for a week or two and then she starts going back. Well, yeah. obviously, you know, peels are a process. You're not going to get everything off that first time. So, I mean, that was peel number one, number two, number three. You want to do at least six to eight in a row, mm -hmm. once a month. Then, you know, it's not just oh, I'm going to do a peel and then put whatever I want on my face. You yeah. have to still use good products to keep that turning over. I would for sure recommend things like retinol. Um, Even and, the, uh, you know, the glycolic serum or something to keep the skin exfoliating. I was just going to say glycolic serum or one of the cleansers. You right. need to constantly be like getting that dead skin off. Use a washcloth when you're washing your face to physically remove the dead skin that's been loosened with the acid. And that should help and then just keep it up and it, it'll be mm -hmm. fine. Be consistent. Yeah, just keep going. Okay, so this one comes all the way from Australia. Uh, combination skin, customer's name is Sanam, Fitzpatrick one. 
Hello, I just finished my two weeks pre, but forgot to stop using retinol. My question is, can I still perform TCA 13 peel um, in the next day, which is on day 15, or do I have to wait two to three days prior? So they forgot to stop the retinol. Right, yeah, because you're loving how it works. Yeah. Um, you know, since, it, I don't know if this is your very first peel, you might want to just stop for two to three days and it then do your be. peel. It might be the first We peel. don't want to make it overly irritating. Some mm -hmm. of those that have been doing peels for a long time, using retinoids for a long time, you might not be so bothered by them. And, and it's okay if they're, you know, using it up to the day before. So mm -hmm. I personally do like to stop at least a couple days because I've done peels not stopping and I've done peels stopping. And there is a marked difference in how irritating that peel is. Like, you know, if I used retinol right up to that day and I, let's say I could only do one or two layers of the TCA 13, whereas mm -hmm. if I stopped retinol, you know, four or five days in advance, I could do three layers or, you know, four layers. Right. There's a huge difference in in pain tolerance. Oh yeah. Vitamin A makes you more sensitive. So, Absolutely. you know, if it's your first time, stop. Okay, so Abby uh, has a couple of questions. She has dry skin, Fitzpatrick four. How many layers of Jesner should I apply before the TCA to treat my stubborn pigmentation? I have mature dry skin. Thanks. That's well, your first question. You always want to start with one or two layers. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want to walk into it saying, I'm going to do four or five layers your very first time using an acid. Right. One to two layers the very first time. See how that works for you. And the next month when you do that peel, you can add on one more layer, you know, and work your way up to five layers. And if you want to move to the next percentage. And question two is, after applying TCA peel, when can I apply sunscreen and go out? Had phenol peel and got hyperpigmentation spots. Mm. How deep are the spots? We have no idea. Well, they could be very, right. very, yeah. very deep. <laughs> and which methods will be most effective to treat them? No, I have used prescription retinol and hydroquinone in the past. Well, you want to, mm -hmm. if you're going outside, you want to put SPF on and you want to put a good amount on to block the sun. Yes. I mean, like we love our coats and they, this is flawless, but they also had the sensitive mm -hmm. and actually that sensitive one, it's a white cream. It's not, you're not going to look white. It's micronized, but that one is actually meant for after treatments, after mm -hmm. needling and microdermabrasions right. and peels. So I would put that on. I would also put a big fat mm -hmm. hat on. Oh, if yeah. you have to go outside immediately after Sunglasses, a peel. Sunglasses, all the goods. Yeah, you know, yep. phenol peel, that is so, so, so deep. And mm -hmm. I mean, there are even times, you might not even get your normal skin color back after a phenol peel. They can be like a bit rosy forever. You're it's put under such general a anesthesia, aren't you, for that? I for, believe for the most for part, sort of it's twilight. heart monitoring. Yeah. It's a very deep peel. And yeah, you could have unintended pigmentation mm -hmm. problems after that. I don't know that any of these peels are gonna help that. Right. I would definitely use things like Fade Bright, high SPF. You mm -hmm. may even need to get like a prescription hydroquinone, like a 6% and above to, if this is caused from the phenol peel. Yep. Okay, Jane has dry skin, dry to combination skin from Iowa, Fitzpatrick too. I've had professional lactic chemical peel in December, January, and March. I would like to do my own. What type from Platinum Skin Care would you recommend? I've been on Platinum Skin Care's website and have read descriptions of each and every product, but it's very overwhelming. Well, if you loved that lactic peel, mm -hmm. then choose our lactic peel and just go right along with that. That's the lactic 50 that we have. I don't know what percentage they did. Um, it can go a little higher, but they might not have. And you're not going to know by how it stings either because lactic's pretty stingy, yeah. in all honesty. Even it's going to cause, yeah. like, no flaking, <laughs> but yikes. You know, it it's really does sting. It's one of our mildest, mildest peels, but it does have a little bit of a bite to it. I must yeah. say, okay, so me being acne-prone, oily, I never wanted to even try the lactic peel. We, kinda, we had it yeah. for those that had dry mm -hmm. skin and sensitive skin. And I tried it one day, and this was years ago, and I was like, Oh my gosh, Yeah, uh, that burned way, <laughs> way more than I thought it was going to burn. It was actually horrible. Like I consider it like e equal to like a glycolic, right. you know, 50 or something in irritation. But yeah, do that. And if you feel that that doesn't work, you know, you could buy a little five ml bottle and test it out. Maybe yeah. buy a lactic 50, a Mandelic yeah, 40. That's a good idea. And give them both a try. 
because they could alternate do a lactic one week and then do a mandelic next the next week to yep. see kind of how your skin you know and then watch the video mm -hmm. which acid is best for me of course as i put a little note there to remind myself yes because you know those are both going to have little to no visible flaking if right. you want more you're going to have to change to a stronger peel like a tca 13 or even a 7 if you're a little scared of tca i use the 7 yeah, it works. I'm not afraid of the TCA, but it works well for me. And I add the dream peel as a finishing layer and mm -hmm. a couple layers of seven. And I, I, I get a nice peel. You do. You peel. Yeah. So there's, there's no question. Yep, so you absolutely. can even start there if, if that's a little overwhelming. All right. Uh, Rosalie has dry skin from New York City. Hi, what kind of peeling do I need to get rid of melasma? Well, okay, very you know, common question. yeah, make sure mm -hmm. obviously the key things you need to be doing like retinol, you need to be using Fade Bright, Fade Bright yep. and you need to be using SPF every single day. That's just a given. You mm -hmm. have to do these. As for the acids that work really well for that, I mean, Mandelic is great. Lactic, again, is great. Yep. We're just talking about lactic. And then if you want to get a little on the stronger side, Jesner yeah. has lactic and resorcinol. Resorcinol is actually like a hydroquinone it helps to lighten the mm -hmm. pigmentation in the skin this is much stronger and it's layerable but any of those are going to work really well for melasma it's tough though it, you know melasma yeah. is hormonal you might not get rid of all of it it's always a problem but then it comes back sometimes back and well, forth yeah. i can't get rid of this i've done everything everything mm -hmm. to this spot here nope it's not going nowhere yeah. all right barbara spatifora has oily skin also from new york uh, i did a series of eight mandelic 40 peels over three months it's been about seven weeks since my last peel. My skin is much drier and seems mm. thinner. How long will it take for collagen to rebuild? Well, I don't think Mandelic's really breaking down anything enough, you know, that you need to yeah. worry about collagen rebuilding or thinning your skin in any way. No. It's, it's a milder peel. Yes. I, don't think that's, I don't think that's what's making your skin thinner. I'm not quite sure why you're thinking that. Is it, you know, maybe it's just not hydrated enough. That's what mm. makes me mm -hmm. think maybe you need to start using things like hyaluronic acid, you know, top that with emu oil or with Dermasnap or something that's going to keep the moisture in your skin. That will help it to be plumper yeah. and, and feeling good. You know, as for collagen, I mean, obviously TCA has been proven to stimulate collagen and elastin production in the skin. I'm sure you know, retinol also helps. Some of the other milder acids may help a little bit, but nothing <clears> like <throat> TCA is gonna do. So if you're really concerned about collagen, you're gonna wanna do a, you know, like a TCA peel. Yep. And she could do mild, like we You know. could do the seven, yeah. just like we were yeah. just talking about. Do a seven. It is a milder and form of it. you control it by how many layers you apply, so you yep. really could do like. Okay, so yep. Inez from Canada has dry skin, Fitzpatrick too. I would like to incorporate peels into my regimen, but I cannot deal with downtime as it drives my husband crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I want to work on skin lightening. What would be a smart choice? Mandelic 40 or TCA 7? Either or. Yeah. Mandelic yeah. 40 is a safer choice for... That's going to be less, less visible yeah. flaking. Well, and yeah. that lactic too. Lactic, um, that'll be like little to no. You, if you see yeah. any flaking at all, that would be really astounding you might feel a little bit dry so lactic would be a great one for your husband's well-being mm -hmm. but you know if you don't care really too yeah. much about what he thinks i would go for you know the mandelic or maybe the tca yeah see i would always want to say like jesner but if you have tca you know seven percent that's certainly going to help right and both are safe for your face and neck yeah both of those that's... percentages too there's no question just stay away from the super high ones okay this comes from chandler arizona uh, Fitzpatrick of four. First, love, love, love your passion and knowledge for skincare. Jennifer, you are a blessing. Thank you. Her question is, I have done three peels now, three TCA 15 on my face and two seven under the eyes. I want to beef up or mix my peels to help firmness and lines. If I add Jesner, do I leave that one on as a last step? And will this help? Um, you will put that on as a first step, actually. Yes. Jesner's going to go on first, and then mm -hmm. you're going to wait your five minutes. Yep. And then, you know, if you had really bad pigmentation or something, I would say go ahead and do a second layer of Jesner. Since mm -hmm. you don't, and you're just trying to beef up the TCA, then do one layer of this, and then one layer of your TCA, and then, you know, another layer if you need to. Obviously, adding on no more than one additional layer every time you do that peel. It's definitely going to help... Um, was there anything else? Nope, that's no, it. no, that's it. 
All right, moving along. Mary has combination skin from Minnesota Fitzpatrick 3. I have wrinkles and hyperpigmentation that I have been using, and I have been using TCA 13, that she has been using TCA 13 for, but I also have constantly clogged pores and sometimes turn into acne bumps. <clears throat> Would a weekly peel help? clear up my pores well you could definitely do like a salicylic 15 peel. oh yeah obviously mm -hmm. you can't do a tca and then you know a week later do salicylic so if you do salicylic that's a weak peel mm -hmm. you have to wait another week and then you can decide oh do i want to do another salicylic or do i want to do tca so if you do a tca now you got to wait a month and then right. after that month you can choose do i want to do a salicylic or tca you can absolutely do that and then daily, it's, it's your daily regimen that I think is probably you don't recommend or you don't talk about anything right, that you're no. using. So, I mean, you need to use AB Cleanser and B Complex in the morning and the evening mm -hmm. and retinol as well in the evening. Retinol is going to help clear out your pores. AB Cleanser is going to help clear out your pores and vitamin B is going to cut that acne in half. And if you have, what was this blackheads, wasn't it? Uh, no black. Well, just, just clogged, clogged pores. I was going to say, if it's blackheads predominantly, that's mm -hmm. got to do with like your mucus mm -hmm. and uh, super oily foods and things like that. You can cut back to help with that. All right. Shania Mohammed has combination skin from Trinidad. Fitzpatrick 4. Her question says, I have been, um, first she says, hello, I've been <laughs> such a great, <laughs> I've, <laughs> I've have been such great results so far with my Mandelic 40, Vitamin B, Fade Bright, AB Cleanser, and Retinol 20. Thank you for creating such amazing products. Wanted to ask, will doing a TCA 13 one layer peel every two to three weeks yield the same results as a two layer peel every month? Saw a lot of mixed responses on the group, but wanted to know your advice. Well, in all honesty, I, I would rather apply the more layers and you know do that once a month you're going to get the best benefit because it's right. just going to go deeper and it's going to be a more mm -hmm. eventful peel but that doesn't always work for everybody you know maybe you can't have all that downtime in your life or your job or whatever your right, day is right. and you need to do something milder but you still want to do tca then i think you would be okay yeah. doing you know one layer every couple of weeks it's just going to take a little bit longer to see the the bigger results but it's going to work you know, so do what you do what works best for your day. All right. Amanda is from California. She asks if we offer professional <laughs> license discounts for licensed cosmetologists. And we do. And we you'll do. talk to you'll talk to me truly here. <laughs> Email us at support at platinum skincare.com and we will send you back a information form and then you'll send us back uh, one license. page that you fill out and a copy of your aesthetic license and we will go from there. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, so Lori has combination skin from Pennsylvania, Fitzpatrick 1 or 2. Uh, hi, Jennifer and Dora. I am wondering how you feel about aloe after a peel instead of healing oils. You know, what's really funny is 20 years ago, yeah. 20 years ago mm -hmm. when I started this, we had, it was just like the glycolic 30 peel, I think. I might have had a 50 peel. And I yeah. wanted to give everybody a free sample, you know, when you're just like starting everything. And that was my free sample. I would buy like mm -hmm. a big jug of aloe juice, basically. Yeah. It was like, and then I would make little samples so that people could use that after yeah. their peel for healing. And, um, you know, it, it's good, but it's yeah. sticky. It I feel is. like it's too yeah. sticky. And then it dries and I don't feel moisturized with it, which mm -hmm. is like, that's why I like the oils, like the emo oil yes. or the healing blend. I think they work really well and you feel a little bit more moisturized. Right. But you can absolutely use yeah, that. For sure. There, there's nothing wrong with that. You can use anything that is anti-inflammatory or healing um, that, that you like. It's your choice, of absolutely. course. Okay, Michelle has combination skin and this question comes from the United Kingdom. She says, first question. Um, oh, she didn't know what the Fitz, Fitzpatrick scale Oh, what was. is a Fitzpatrick scale? Well, Fitzpatrick, now that's the, the coloring of your skin. Mm -hmm. And you'll find this chart for sure on the TCA and the Jesner page, and I know on several other pages. But it's basically, you know, very, very light skin where you've got, like, you know, your Irish and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. And then it progresses up to five. Yeah, so the higher the Fitzpatrick, the darker the skin tone. And that's the very, very dark skin, yeah. like, you know, like an African native or something like that. Yeah. Very, very black and then very, very white. 
And you know, basically like with peels and things like that, Fitzpatrick one and two, even three are like really safe for anything. Once you hit like Asian, mm -hmm. Mediterranean, like the right. olive colors and darkness, that's when you have to be a little bit more cautious with for the sure. stronger peels. You need to use prep things like melanin inhibitors for a couple mm -hmm. weeks to help you know, turn down the reaction in your skin so you don't get left with, you know, spotting and things after. But that's why that's so important. Okay. Uh, her second question was, where does a 53-year-old newbie start? Well, number one, I would say retinol every single night. Yeah. That's really going to make a huge mm -hmm. difference in your skin. So clear out your pores, you know, tighten your pores. Not instantly. That's going to take months. But very good, very smoothing, it makes your skin turn over more quickly. I would throw on, you know, something like a daily acid cleanser. Yeah, um, yeah, perfect. Good moisturizer, we have the GABA or the Dermasnap. And now, if you're referencing a peel though here, right. if you wanna start somewhere, I, I always lean towards the Mandelic peel. Yes. Or even a glycolic 30, you know, it really depends on what the problems are. I said 53, so assuming you're concerned about age, anti-aging things, right. wrinkles, all that kind of stuff. So she like, could always visit Peel University too. There you go. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. That's going to give her. <laughs> yeah. Go there. All the information that you need. There's just everything laid out, including that Fitzpatrick chart. Yes. You know, to help you choose where yours, where you lie and your, um, you know, how damaged your skin is. And you know, if you need to be more aggressive with peels mm -hmm. or if you can be less aggressive, that's a super site. So yeah, peeluniversity.com. That will really help. Perfect. Okay, so Nicole Beck has combination skin from Ohio, Fitzpatrick of two. I have melasma prone skin. It's not bad now because I have worked on it for years. I have been using hydroquinone 4% on the areas needed and Skin Medica's Lytera all over. Mm, don't know. Um, I, I think I may have heard of it. Cycled Triluma in the past. What peel would be good to help clear my skin without exacerbating the melasma without making it worse hmm. well you're already using a high percentage of hydroquinone yep. uh, there are higher percentages of that four percent but you really don't want to stay on hydroquinone forever right. i mean that you can only stay on that for a very short amount of weeks and then you really need to come off and then you know alternate it with something maybe like fade bright for a couple months and then go back to your hydroquinone what about like jesner she has combination skin melasma prone yeah, well, you know, and then melasma, generally you're not going to exacerbate it too much. Um, you just want to help to lighten that pigmentation. So, it's yeah, Jesner, Jesner is really good. And technically it's not really a, an inflammatory peel because of salicylic based mm -hmm. in aspirin. It's actually an anti-inflammatory. Generally pretty darn safe. Mandelic, if you want to be really, really much milder, this is also good for, you know, pigmentation issues. But, you know, melasma is a lifelong journey yeah. and it's something that's not just going to go away as hormonal. Try to look into like different supplements and things for strengthening your liver. I know it sounds hokey, but that's where the problem lies. All right. This one comes all the way from Germany. Gabriella has a Fitzpatrick of three. She has, can see Deutsch. Yes. That's all I know. She has combination <laughs> skin. She says, hi, I bought several products and before preparing for my first peel, I saw your very informative videos. Now I have a question on how to layer the products. In which order after cleansing with a pH acidic cleanser, do I apply the vitamin C and fade bright in the morning and the Retin-A, or she says, and my Retin-A and fade bright in the evening? Well, you always wanna go thin to thick. So that means you wanna start with serums and then move to creams and then move to oils. And then if it's daytime, SPF. Mm -hmm. So the, the only factor here with serums is if you have a serum that is an acid or alcohol based that should really go on first so mm -hmm. like fade bright would go on first or like serum 15 or 30 one of the SM serums would go on first then any other serums then um and, and vitamin c is considered a serum too even mm -hmm. though it's thicker that's an acid as well right then you're going to go on to your creams and oils and spf at nighttime you're going to wash you're going to put on fade bright and then you're going to put on you know your retinoid all right uh coming let's see from toronto twinkle 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 uh oily skin combination fitzpatrick four i have super oily t-zone and super dry chin around my mouth i have a little hyperpigmentation going on around my mouth 
how many, how many TCA20 peels do I need to treat the hyperpigmentation? What else do you suggest for my skin to be even? Well, if you're super dry around your mouth, like I'm wondering what you're using right now that you're so dry or what you're not using. Like, are you not hydrating your skin properly? Right. Why are you so dry around your mouth area? Like, mm -hmm. I, f I feel like I want to say you need, especially with the mm -hmm. oily, like use like something like an AB cleanser. Yeah. Like this has 11% acid in it. So that's going to help to get some of that dead skin off of your face. All right. And then once you get that off, use your washcloth, get mm -hmm. the dead skin off hydrate really well. You can use like the hyaluronic or the vitamin B. Both of these are perfectly fine for acne prone skin, oily skin, um, you know, and with your SPF. Now you're talking about hyperpigmentation around the mouth and TCA20. TCA20 is really, really high. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I wouldn't jump to that, especially with the Fitzpatrick four. Right. Um, I would think more so along the lines of maybe Mandelic or possibly Jesner, mm -hmm. but only after prepping with, you know, sure. Fade Bright or another melanin inhibitor for at least two to three weeks. And that's gonna help to lighten that pigmentation anyways. But, you know, follow a more, you know, an acne regimen. Uh, you know, I'm saying like even, just like the whole acne regimen, the A, B, the B, and the retinol. Mm -hmm. You know, retinol is gonna help turn your skin over and get rid of that dead skin more too. You know, you don't wanna be dealing with all that dead skin. You need that exfoliated off. All right, um, Geneva from Tennessee, Fitzpatrick three. I purchased the Dream Peel. How long should I be off my Tretinoin 0.1% prior to using the Dream Peel? Okay, so 0.1% is the strongest Tretinoin. And if you've been using that for a long time, then your skin's yeah. probably really tolerant. You know, we always want you to stop a couple of days before you do a peel for sure. Now with the Dream Peel, we'd say, you know, one, two or three nights. With your long-term use yeah. of tretinoin 0.1, your skin's gonna be really, really tolerant. You may need to do like four days right. for sure right. to get any kind of flaking from the Dream Peel. And I, I and it does say that on, on the box on your direction card that if you've been using this, even this for a long time and you've been doing three days yeah. and you're kind of losing effectiveness, you want you know more, then go ahead and add on another mm -hmm. day at your discretion moving forward because your skin does acclimate to sure. you know vitamin a but yeah all right linda murphy from texas has combination skin <clears throat> how long are peels good for unopened i ordered some kits and have not used them yet yep so it says in the back of this expiration sealed two years so as long as your peel bottle has mm -hmm. not been opened it is good for two years if you have opened it and it's been you know in touch with the air it's good for up to one year right all right moving along julie combination skin houston texas fitzpatrick of two or three i have old leather looking skin on my chest my dermatologist is recommending a treatment that takes six to twelve months with no sun exposure for four months and says it's a blood vessel blood vessel issue when i use your products on my chest fade bright high octane vitamin C, it turns irritated in red and elevates. It never peels. TCA 13 or with prescription. Pers yeah, I think yeah. I was supposed to say yeah. prescription, prescription retinols. <clears throat> what do you suggest? It sounds like your skin is very, very sensitive. Yeah. If you're elevated putting on vitamin rash. C mm -hmm. or fade bright or anything that's causing irritation and elevation, maybe a rash. What yeah. Were you, yeah. Something right. along those lines you need to be even more cautious. Like, I don't even want to recommend you doing peels. I want to recommend other things to help, yeah. you know, strengthen your skin. And copper, I'm thinking of copper always because Dr. Picard said that um, copper helps to strengthen the capillary formations mm. in your skin. So like people that have yeah. breaking capillaries and redness and things like that, mm -hmm. applying copper helps that. Right. You know, in the long term, it might not help instantly, but that is something that you should add on. And then we have you know things like the regenerate the epidermal growth factor this is going to help to regenerate new tissues that are right. maybe better than what's under there same with the copper helps to get rid of damaged and replace it with new good better so let's try to like improve that skin you know while you're waiting and things like you know emu oil for hydration and protection and skin thickening yeah so you're not so sensitive absolutely because emu oil is a natural skin thickener 
I would go along with things like that. And if you ever want to add a little bit of exfoliation, you could try something like Serum 15, which mm -hmm. is just 15% acid. Maybe try that a couple, two, three times a week at night before you go to bed. See if you can get a little bit of exfoliation without being so irritated. What about our triple treat body lotion for her, maybe? That too. I mean, to yeah, it. or, or the other. So that's 25% yeah. or 15%. And just try something, but yeah. only don't try to do it every day, you know, maybe once Test a week. Test a small spot too. Don't put it on your whole chest if you feel like you're going to break out or get, you know, like a rash. For sure. Just a small spot just to see how your skin reacts first. I think that'd be the best way. Right. Okay. Uh, Kathleen has combination skin <clears throat> from Iowa. Do you have a cream that for wrinkles on the eye all in one so you don't have to put two or three things on? Well, we've got our platinum eye cream, which is really good. This mm -hmm. is also good for puffiness and dark circles. Then we carry, I don't have it here, but we have Dr. Picard's GHK Lux mm -hmm. eye cream. That's a really good one, like especially if people have the hooded eyes and things like that. A lot of people like to do you know, the GHK at night and the platinum eyes during the day. Mm -hmm. That's really good. I know you just want like a one easy thing, so you could pick one of those. Right. And then obviously if you need something more intense, we have, you know, the TCA eye peel kit where you can do a peel once a month. And that will make a substantial um, improvement on any kind of wrinkles and loosening skin. Okay. Um, all right. So Cheyenne, Cheyenne has oily skin from Phoenix, Fitzpatrick of five. With summer coming upon us, is it safe or even okay to do chemical peels during the summer month? I started my series last month in April and recently did my second peel. I am hesitant about providing fur or proceeding further in the hot months and wasn't sure if I needed to stop and continue when it cools down. Thanks for your help. Yeah, that's always She does have TCA 13. She that's says. Always a big debate. Yeah. For in real. the group every day. <laughs> and it's there's, you know, two sides to yeah, the story. For, sure. for the most part, you can absolutely mm -hmm. absolutely do peels all year long. There are people that live in hot climates that never have a winter right. time, but do peels. You know, right. that's where all the sun damage is. Right. But they're very, very diligent with their sunblock. They wear like a big head if you're mm -hmm. gonna be spending time outside. If you're gonna be inside, then it doesn't matter. But yeah, if you're gonna spend time outside, you need that protection. And if you, you know, are going to do that and protect yourself, then you can. If you feel like, oh no, I'm still gonna hang out by the pool and you know, I wanna tan, then you're better off putting it away right. until fall. Giving it a break. Yep. All right, so Andrea is from California. She has dry skin, Fitzpatrick of three. She asks, what acids cannot be used in conjunction with the GHKCU accelerant besides hyaluronic acid? What happens if you use the GHK with hyaluronic acid? Nothing at all is gonna happen if you use it with hyaluronic because even though this is called hyaluronic acid, it's not really an acid. Um, the pH level of it is higher than an acid. So like I even just before mm -hmm. this, I tested ours and it's a pH of six. Mm -hmm. Okay, so a pH of six is not an acid. Acids are generally like three and lower, maybe up to a four. I don't remember what the scale is. Um, but your skin is somewhere around a 4.5 to a 6.5. So it's, it's absolutely perfect. I would not apply GHK next to any other acids like hydroxy acids or retin A. That was her second part or, of her question. Oh yeah, vitamin or C. vitamin yeah. C. Acid, yes, very stingy. Um, definitely put this with like the, the gentle. And there are one or two other things that you're supposed to keep away from this that it's on the webpage. I can't remember if it's like zinc or there's a couple of just little interesting things, but no, this would be perfect to mix with the And she nano. says, do you need to take a break from it or can you continue to use it? There, there is no evidence that you need to stop use. What I would suggest though, with anything, you know, especially it's a little costly. Yeah. Um, you know, if you've gotten good use and you feel like you've been using it well for mm -hmm. a long while, then start cutting back, you know, use it every other day and make sure everything's still looking good. You know, there's no need to use it every single day, you know, if you're already getting benefits. You just want to prolong those benefits. All right, this next question comes from North Carolina. Miss Brooke Lopez has combination skin. <clears throat> I did my first Mandelic peel wrong because I did not watch the video. So I didn't rinse it off with a neutralizer in five minutes. What happens when you misperform a peel? I also don't have Facebook in your questions. 
are during work or your questionnaires are during work times, will this be emailed to me? Maybe we should, uh, I don't know if we can email her, but yeah. put a little thing there. We'll try to contact her. We will. But yeah, we post these videos and actually, oh, we will email the videos out. Yeah, we're going to email it out anyways, because when we're done with this live and it is posted on YouTube and posted on Peel University <clears throat> and all that kind of stuff, we send out an email linking to it. And actually on there, they do it by time. And so, you know what? Oh, yeah. At, at 3.35, we addressed your question and then you'll be able to get your exact answer. Yeah, duh, it'll be right there for you. And what was the other question? You know, I don't know what, at some point, at some point you you put a peel on and it's a low pH level, like ours is like a 2.1, I believe. Then your skin is higher. Your skin does attempt to neutralize this acid. Yeah. I don't know when that's going to happen. It right. could be 15 minutes from now. It could be an hour from now. Yeah. Now you're always supposed to rinse the acids. That right. you left it on, you know, you don't, you don't exclaim that there's a whole bunch of horrendous things happening on your face, so it must have turned right. out okay. And some clients do work their way up to that point. Yes, they do. So that particular acid mandelic especially with mandelic is a little bit more friendly to that leave-on situation i think so too yeah because we have people i always say like, okay you do your first peel like mm -hmm. five minutes next time do yeah. 10 minutes do right. 15 minutes 20 minutes because it doesn't cause a lot of flaking no matter right. what you do but yeah we do have some that'll leave it on an hour two hours overnight <laughs> you know but that's not a first time thing i'm Correct. glad it worked out okay for you or there would have been a lot of exclamation there would have been more more scary faces or something <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Gail has normal skin from Rocklin. I am doing a mandelic peel. How long does it take to heal? Is it real invasive? Not at all. Yes. Mandelic, like just how we were just talking about this. Yeah. is a pretty mild. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the PK level and all that kind of stuff, it's a stronger acid. It's good for your skin, but it's not going to cause a lot of downtime or anything like that. I think most people might get some dryness. Right. Maybe a little bit of flaking, you know, around the nose. It's not a heavily... Mm -hmm heavily peeling type peel you're going to be it's probably just why fine. It's one of our uh, one of the number one yeah big seller. i like it too because mm -hmm. actually it works really well it does it works it helps whatever problem you're trying to address but you don't have a lot of downtime it's yeah. like a it's a beautiful thing it's it's my favorite besides tca it's yeah. my favorite yeah All my right. second favorite okay so carter has normal skin from seattle fitzpatrick four or five uh, what is the best routine to remove brown spots and lines from the chest? Also, is there one best product for spot removal? I have a few small spots in other places. Also, I don't know what Fitzpatrick I am. All right, well, we talked about Fitzpatrick. You can see that chart on the website. You can see it at Peel University where you can like learn where your skin yeah. is. Um, and if she's unsure if she's a four or a five, you're in that category where you would need to pre-treat regardless. No matter what. Yeah. yeah. If you're going to be doing a stronger peel, like let's say Jessner is really good for hyperpigmentation, you would want to pre-treat with, yeah. you know, fade bright for two, three weeks before you do this peel when you're in that high range. Then you want to use, or this is a, something that you would want to use to mm -hmm. help with the spots. You want to put, you put it on your whole face. Um, every day, or if you just want to dab a spot, I suppose you could. Right. Um, then use things like retinoids at night too. Retinol, Retin A, whatever you have, that's going to stimulate your skin to turn over, help to get those spots off more quickly. Perfect. All right. Next one comes from Annie. She has normal skin from Ohio. Fitzpatrick <clears throat> up two. Just recently had neck surgery. How soon after surgery can I do a peel for the scar? When is the soonest after surgery? Could I use Supercop 2X on the scar? Well, here's the thing. Oh, you're, well, that's peel and 2X, so it's two separate things. When you, you know, have a surgical procedure or an <clears> injection <throat> or something like that, you have bruising, you have tissue damage, tissue being sutured, that needs to heal 100% mm -hmm. before you do a peel. Yes. And even though if it looks healed and you still have a little tenderness and bruising, you shouldn't do another peel. Your body is still busy right. healing that and you don't want to do another traumatic thing, even though a peel is not as traumatic as a, sure. a surgical yeah. procedure, but it's the same thing. It requires your body to be at 100% to heal properly. And if you're compromised in any way, mm -hmm. your skin might not heal properly. You might end up with problems. Mm -hmm. And I, I, sometimes I, I 
think that, that the people that end up having like not a good result with some of the peels, mm-hmm. I feel like there's something else going on. For sure. That I like, agree. oh yeah, well, I oh, I have lupus. Well, that's yeah. why, you right. know, there's yeah. always a, there's always a reason or people just, you know, get this injection and then not an injection so much, but you know, a big needling thing and then do a peel like right after and stuff and then run into trouble and irritations. And it's like, it's because you're not spacing yeah. things far apart. Right. Now, as for copper on a wound, as long, and I learned this just so long ago, I don't even know where it is. I think he just said it, but Dr. Picard was basically like, the wound needs to be closed. It needs yeah. to be sealed and healed. Yes. Yeah. Before you start putting That's copper powerful on. powerful stuff. Yeah, well, yeah, number one, that it'll it hurt, you yeah. know, it will, it will be very irritated, but, you know, copper is going to break down tissue mm-hmm. and then replace it with new tissue. So if you've got like a barely sealed closed wound, you don't want to be breaking those tissues down. You right. want to let that work. And when you cut your skin, you that collagen mm-hmm. is growing insanely. Like that's an amazing time. Just <clears> let <throat> it go. Let it heal. Right. And when you're no longer bruised, it feels good, normal, you can push right. on. Okay, now put a tiny smear of this on. But yeah, dude, don't oil. rush it. Emo oil, oil is oil. good when you're during you know during that healing phase. It is. As long as it's closed. That's like as right. long as the tissues have knitted yes. together, you can start using emo oil. But you want it like healed, healed yeah. before you start using copper. Absolutely. Okay. So that was in depth. <laughs> <laughs> Angela has uh, oh she doesn't tell us her Fitzpatrick. Hello, I have a two ounce bottle of TCA twenty. Is it normal for it to be pressurized every time I open it? And to s- it kind of fizzles when she opens it and pours it into another container, like maybe like the air. Yeah, it could be the air. You know what I'm thinking too, and I don't know how old your bottle was, but there was a time where we had a different secondary acid inside of the mm-hmm. TCA peels. It, this was a couple years ago, three was, years or so, and it would yeah. like, it would just yeah. like pop the I was top right say, off. It, was like a, yeah. it would pressurize. But other than that, unless we're talking that this is maybe like, you know, over two years, then I would replace that. Yeah. But I mean, I wouldn't worry too much if it's under two years or you haven't used it or you've only used it a couple of times. I'm sure it's fine. And if it's years enough old that it was from that previous batch where we had the different acid, I can't remember if it was citric or something different in there and it was causing the fizzing. Well, that needs to go in the garbage at this point because it's way too old. (laughs) Absolutely. Okay, so Cindy has combination skin from Illinois, Fitzpatrick of two. I'm going to do an eye peel. Do I really use rubbing alcohol around my eyes? It seems quite harsh. Also, what sunblock do you recommend for the eye area that won't run or burn my eyes? I work outside a lot in sweat. Sometimes the sunblock gets in my eyes and bothers me. What do you recommend? This always makes me laugh slash smile when people are concerned about putting rubbing alcohol on before the peel. And it's like, you know, the peel is much stronger than just that. And it is based in alcohol. So it's alcohol and acid. But yes, it is very, very important to strip your skin before you put the acid on so it works properly and evenly. An even clean slate. Yeah, I mean, you could wash your face, but what if you don't have a really good cleanser? What if you didn't do a really good job and there's still a little mm-hmm. oily smear here that or you don't see? Cleanser residue or something. And Anything, then lotion residue, you had oil on, it didn't come off well. And now when you're putting that acid on, it's not going to penetrate. But if you use either our prep solution or 90% alcohol or higher or pure acetone right. and strip that skin and then put it on, now it's going to penetrate well. You're going to have a better peel. Yes. But yeah, don't skip that part. Really yeah. don't. You it's, will have a better peel. Oh, you will. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. Wasn't there another part too? What was her? Didn't she have another question? Oh, oh about the sunblock I, going into sunblock, her Sunblock, right. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to say, well, any of the coats, they're really good. Mm-hmm. The one that's sensitive, I would oh. use that one. Yeah. The one that's a white cream. That one is actually meant to go on, you know, after needling and after peels and right. after... Um, irritating procedures so that's the one that I think would be the best that's not going to um, cause burning and just a light layer a little bit yeah normally you want to put a good layer on your face but like on your eyes though yep put some sunglasses on a hat yep you're good all right Charles Drake has combination skin from North Carolina Fitzpatrick of two I saw a comment about using 7% TCA on heavy hooded lids 
my thinking is to never go below the brow bone on the upper eyelid interested in response. Well, you need to take a look at our TCA eye peel video and it's on this page with our TCA eye restoration kit. This comes with a vial of the TCA 7% peel. Mm -hmm. And yes, you do want to put it on your full eye. Yes. You know, during this, we use like a little Q-tip and some Vaseline and you go like right at the lash line and in your corners because no, you don't want it to seep into your eyes. Correct. But if you're targeting the lid, well, you need to apply the acid to the lid. You can't just apply here and expect it to work down here. Right. So yeah, you absolutely can. So watch that video. It is very safe for using a very dry application of acid to make this even safer oh, yeah. and that's gonna be helpful but I do want to mention and I always mention this if you have loose skin on your eyelids nothing is going to take that skin away other than a surgical procedure known as a upper blepharoplasty. Mm -hmm. That is the only thing that is going to remove skin. And if you have skin on the lower areas of your face and things, yes, this can tighten it, it can stimulate mm -hmm. collagen, it's gonna look smoother and better, right. but it's not gonna give you the result you would get if you had a procedure. So don't, you know, put all your eggs in one basket. You may need to do two things. Yes. Okay, so Lori Podani has combination <clears throat> skin from Edmond, Oklahoma, Fitzpatrick of two. I am an RN and I'm thinking about providing the service in my current doctor's office. My question is, if someone does happen to have an area of hyperpigmentation from a peel, can this be treated in how? Yeah, and we, we have actually have a video on this as well. You know, like, whoops, I didn't yeah. you know, follow proper protocol and ended up with PIH. And basically you want to treat it like you would prep anyone for PIH, which is using melanin inhibitors right. and retinoids on a daily basis, obviously with high SPF. And after a few weeks, if you want to try another peel, you can do a milder one, like a mandelic peel. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, if you want to, you know, with a Q-tip or something, you could try a, a Jesner peel. Um, just because this has resorcinol in it, which is basically like hydroquinone and lactic, and this can be really good to help treat those spots. It may take a while. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. PIH takes almost yeah. longer to get rid of than, you know, normal hyperpigmentation. It's, it's an inflammation. It's a problem now. I always ask, you know, what peel did you do to, that caused that? And right, how many don't layers? do that again. So you know, <laughs> cut that in half and then cut the layers in half. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. Might be on the right yeah side. don't be putting a TCA right. 20 on Ugh. ethnic skin without prepping and just Sometimes they want to do another do one okay. right away and it's like, no, no, no. Yeah, should I put this one on again? Yeah, no. Will it help? Nope, it didn't help no. the first time. It's not going to mm -hmm. help the second time. It's going to make it worse. You right. need to be milder now, milder yes. acids. Yes. Okay, so Denise has combination skin from California. I use 70% glycolic on my arms. Can I use the TCA 13 for dark spot treatment after using the glycolic in a week or so? If I'm using all the products recommended for the peels. So here's my thought on that. Either if you're gonna do a TCA 13, do that one month and do a glycolic 70 the yep, next month. That's what I would say. You don't wanna do one one week and one the next week because yeah. no matter what, it's gonna take 10 to 14 days oh, yeah. for any dryness to start and another couple weeks for that to finish. Yep. I did have a thought that, you know, if you did a 70% and you wanted, to, you rinsed that off, this same session maybe, mm. if you had that TCA and you had like a spot you wanted to try, I think you might be okay to just dab one on that spot, wait five minutes and rinse it and see if that helps. But it's not something I've ever tried. It was just a thought I had that yeah. I don't see any harm in it. For sure. I mean, there's, there's no more harm than doing a salicylic or a Jesner before you put TCA on. Right. You know, it's just a different acid. Gotcha. Okay, so Lana has combination skin from right here in Michigan. Hello, come Fitz visit us. <laughs> Fitzpatrick 2 or 3. Um, she says, hello, I've recently been prescribed azelaic acid 15% because I can't use my retinol while pregnant. My question is, do I need to stop using my azelaic acid a few days before a peel? Uh, can I resume use the next day after a peel? My skin has adjusted to the azelaic acid and I do either mandelic or glycolic, glycolic yes. acid peels, so nothing too intense. And those are so both fine for pregnancy. Yeah. You just want to stay away from salicylic and TCA. So no Jesner, no TCA. So I would maybe stop it a day or two before. Yeah. I mean, 
seven azaleic 15. Okay, we where we have 2% azaleic in our Mandelic 22, that is it for topical azaleic. You know, so that 15%, that's a nice good percentage that is commonly used to, um, you know, help help with that. Yeah, so what we, we got a, here? I'm like got, talking and I'm looking and no, I forgot what I was saying. A, we have couple a questions. That couple was it for questions. our early questions. So let me see if there's anything else. Yeah, Abby says, how soon after the peel can... I put on sunscreen? Yeah. Um, you can do it immediately if you have to. I, I would you know, recommend waiting the next day or so. Like I hate putting something so thick on that you're gonna have to scrub off later after a peel. Like a lot of times, even if people leave the salon, sometimes they won't put SPF on. Okay. You know, if you're going right home, they generally don't. I'm like, you know, just kind of cover up, run to your car, <laughs> you'll get home and try to keep that off. We've, right. got, we've got, usually we've got like emu oil, which actually has a little bit of sun protection in it. I, they did a study on that and there was a guy riding a, a bike mm. uh, marathon and they tested the emu oil or was it shea butter? Oh, it could have been shea butter. I can't remember which one, but it helped to block the sun. So, you know, some things help to actually protect you a little bit from the sun. Right. But, you know, I hate to lather on tons of sunblock immediately after a peel, but, you know, a few hours later yeah. or the next Absolutely. day. For sure. Perfectly fine. Okay. Uh, Renee McDonald says, can you spot peel? For example, only put TCA on wrinkled areas and not the whole face. Well, you could, but treatment. why would you want to? Right. You know, number one, what I would suggest is to do a whole layer on your whole face and then do a second layer on that wrinkle or a third layer on that wrinkle. So you get just a light peel mostly and then a deeper peel on those deeper lines. That is, that it, is my it. friend. Woohoo! We rocked these questions and got through and even, even added some extra info. So All it right. wasn't too bad. So next time, you know, I don't know, probably be another couple, two, three weeks before we do another of these. So go to Peel University and put your questions in. And of course, we're here Monday through Friday, 9 to 430 to mm -hmm. answer your physical phone calls. Call yes. us. What is it? 1-800-917-3155. That's it. You can email us, support at PlatinumSkincare.com. Or you can walk in our front door if you're local. You can message us, Facebook, Instagram. It's all out there. We get them YouTube all. YouTube comments. <laughs> we answer so you all. So we are good, and this was fun, and you have a great day. We'll see you later. See you soon. Bye.